What's good, people? This is Sam, football critic, and I know most of you guys are probably expecting a Madden NFL 25 Next Gen video, but I'm going to hold off that video until tomorrow. I have some exclusive information that I may be able to bring to you guys, as well as possibly some exclusive footage. So I'm hoping to get that, and if so, I will show that to you tomorrow. But either way, I'll be making that video tomorrow. But right now, we're going to address the topic at hand, and that is the Xbox One versus the ps4 all right now i'm just going to give you my thoughts and opinions and of course your comments and thoughts are welcome definitely leave those you know just try to keep it clean guys you know i don't care about the you know the disagreements and the debate but just try to keep it clean because if it's not clean and it's you know extremely vulgar i'm sorry i'm gonna have to delete your comment but anyway let's just jump right into it so we learned quite a few things today that you know was very interesting and you know you're kind of seeing the momentum shift in different directions for one we got to address right out the gate the pricing 499 versus 399 that's huge in the eyes of your average consumer 100 dollars difference you, know, you got to think about those guys who only play certain games and they are available on both platforms they're going to go with the playstation plain and simple you're going to have a lot of people who don't care about the features that the xbox offers or they have no need for Xbox, they don't play Connect. you know, they don't have kids or what have you that's crying about Connect or things like that, they're going to go with the PlayStation. I don't blame them. If you can get your gaming fulfilled with the PlayStation and save $100, you got to go with the PlayStation. Hey, no problem here with that. Do you as well. They're saying that there will be no connectivity restrictions, which we know Microsoft does require that you check in. That's another huge feature. Now, another thing that they mentioned I'm not so sure about. They mentioned that they will not be charging fees for used games and they do support used games. But if you really think about it, Microsoft said the same thing. The only difference, Microsoft went a step further and they mentioned that they'll leave that decision up to the third party developer. So the question would be, if this developer, if they develop for both platforms, are they going to charge both customers? That's a good question, right? To me, I would think so. I'm not sure. All I'm saying is Sony didn't confirm that third party developers wouldn't be able to charge fees. Not that I know of. Now, if that information is out there, please send it to me and let me know. I'm just saying based off of what I know right now. Another thing that I was glad to see from Microsoft is they are offering some type of live stream or broadcast mode which would be basically through twitch so they have a partnership there and that's a good thing because one thing that i did rave about with the playstation 4 is the fact that they were offering a spectator mode so it kind of evens the play and feel a little bit even though they'll be offered in different ways at least that availability is there now here's another thing playstation pretty much announced that in order to play multiplayer games you'll have to upgrade your PlayStation Network status to the Plus, which my understanding is uh, $6, well, $5 a month from what most people are saying, and that equals out to be $60 a year, which is basically the same thing you play on, pay on Microsoft, you know, for the Xbox Live. So, you know, now it seems most people nowadays are online gamers. Of course, the regular PlayStation Network account will still be free, and, you know, you can game offline and things of that nature at no cost. But you cannot forget the fact that now you will have to pay to play multiplayers online. So, you know, the funny thing to me is people are hearing what they want to hear. You know, I'm trying to keep it very unbiased and not even try. I keep it very unbiased. I said from the beginning that both consoles will be good. Both consoles will have things you may not like. And both consoles will have things that you will rave about. I said that out the gate. But, you know, for some reason, people seem to forget that. And, hey, I'm here to remind you. This video will always remind you of that. I think both consoles are good. I like what I see from both of them as far as gaming. Another thing, let's not forget, and I wanted to point this out. You know, a lot of people were making fun of Microsoft, you know, talking about the TV capabilities and TV shows and things of that nature. And guess what? Tonight, Sony also says that they will be able to do more than just gaming, which if you know anyone that is smart enough to realize it i figured both consoles would do that anyway because nowadays you have to offer more than just a gaming experience in order to justify pricing and you know and 
just to get your customers. You know, not everybody just wants the game. They want the extra features and the bells and whistles. So you have to do some extra things to get people interested. So I'm not surprised there. That's why I was very surprised that people jumped all over Microsoft when they released that information and hadn't even seen what Sony was going to do in that area. So again, both consoles will have things that we all like. Both consoles will have a couple things that we will hate. And it just is what it is. Go with the console of your choice. I said it again. I'm going to go with the Xbox because it's the most suitable console for my household. That's what I'm going to do. The restrictions that Microsoft is currently applying don't affect me. Now, will they affect me in the future? We'll see. Remains to be seen. I'm just saying as of now, these things will not affect me and my gaming experience. And that's the way I'm going to go. So choose your console. They will both be great. Let's all get ready to rock out. And you let me know what you think. All right, people. Don't forget, every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Sim Perspective Radio Show, the show for the Sim Gamer. Give us a call at 347-202-0388.